Hey guys, Twigglers2 here. If you've just purchased Men of War Assault Squad 2, this quick start guide will provide new players with essential tips to help you get over the learning curve as quickly as possible. This is everything I've learned that could be described as a eureka moment, which genuinely made the game easier. Let's waste no more time and get stuck in. This first tip is about soldier control and how to help them stay alive for longer. You highlight your squad or individual soldiers, and tap Alt, you'll make them kneel down, and Alt again will make them go prone. You can tap Q, and then Q again for them to stand up. Now, ideally, your soldiers will be behind cover at all times, but if you do get caught in the middle of a field like this, and a firefight erupts, one of the best things you can do is tap Alt and get them to go prone. They'll last so much longer this way, you'd actually be surprised at how much longer this keeps them in the fight. One of the main selling points of Men of War is the direct control mode. And one of the most satisfying uses of this mode is to manually throw a grenade. So to enter, direct control, tap E. Tap it again to exit, or alternatively, you can hold down control. And then once you let go of control, you'll exit the mode. Let's go in. How do you select grenade? At the moment, this guy has his gun out. How do we get grenade? We right click. And you'll see in the bottom left, it's swapped from his gun to his grenade. And then we can throw it. Just over a four second timer there. But what if they have different types of grenades? That's all right. If you're in the direct control mode, you can still right click to select grenades. But then if they have different types, you simply go down here in the bottom left and you can select which grenade you would like. They'll switch and we can give it a throw. Now, something that the AI is very good at in this game is throwing grenades back. So you'll want to cook the grenades pretty much any time that you throw one. If you observe, I'm going to hold down left click and you'll see the crosshair shrink as prepared to throw the grenade. Let's throw it. No chance there for them to throw that back. Cooking grenades, you may as well do it basically every single time. Another very useful tip is to split up your squads. Now, although they do come in a squad of eight here, and you can select them in the bottom left as a whole squad, they don't need to stay that way. Once you engage in a firefight, one of the best things you can do is leave a central squad, perhaps of three, to engage the enemy, to draw their fire. And then you can select a couple of guys on the right to flank, and a few guys on the left to flank. What we've done is split their fire between three different fields, and that means it is, on the whole, less effective, making it much easier for us to flank them, still drawing their fire from here, once they start shooting these guys, we can then move these guys to a bit of cover. Ultimately, what you want to do is flank them. You'll see just how quickly you can shred them to pieces once you get the right angle on them. And then you can just reform the squad by highlighting them. Nice and easy. That leads us on to our next point. You don't want to leave your squad all clumped up, even when they're not in combat. Because if they're like this, a single grenade could take out the majority of them. And the AI loves using a grenade. So even when you're not attacking, keep them at least a little bit spaced out. Don't clump them up. And that way they are far less susceptible to enemy grenades. You'll often find that your soldiers will run out of ammunition on the battlefield, forcing them to scavenge from what's around them. There are two main keys that you'll need for this. Firstly, you can hold down C, which will highlight all of the equipment available around you. Once you find something you like the look of, you right click on it and your soldier will pick it up. And you'll find it in their inventory. The alternative to this is to hold down V, which will highlight dead bodies, yellow for your friendly soldiers, red for enemy soldiers. If you right click on that, 
you'll bring up the dead soldiers inventory will always be on the right the left will always be the soldier that you had highlighted you can right click to instantly transfer over equipment or double click if you prefer and transfer back and forth in that way too in a similar vein you can switch ammo between squad mates the key for this one is x tap that you'll see the eye icon click on the soldier with a left click and both of their inventories will be displayed ready for you to right click to shift between them as much as you would like it's also worth noting that if you've highlighted multiple and then done the same the ammo that you shift to the squad will be shared evenly between them considering each individual soldier's role is so important it can be frustrating when all you want to do is find the bloody medic and the easiest way to do that if you have a clump of soldiers and you're just not sure which is the medic yes, highlight them all and they'll appear in the bottom right here a little cross will be your medic and it's quite an easy way of seeing who's the machine gunner etc as well it, an easy way of finding your medic considering there are so many squads and vehicles in this game it can actually be difficult to tell what each is good at take these two squads for example they look the same to me but they are actually pretty different and the way to find out exactly what they do and what they're good at go over to the deployment menu and each time you hover over each square you see the little yellow eye icon there click on that and you get a handy description of what they do assault infantry makes them ideal for close quarters combat and urban fighting whichever way you look at it assault squad 2 can be confusing and bloody overwhelming particularly at first even for quite a seasoned rts veteran so there is absolutely no shame in hitting backspace and changing the game speed in fact i would absolutely encourage it even if it's just to save you stress levels slow everything down and then you can get used to doing all these random things like inspecting each other's inventory shifting equipment between them in the middle of a firefight everything will be easier if you just slow it down and then of course as you get more confident you can start to slowly edge it up hotkeys are an important part of any rts game and assault squad 2 is no exception and what you can see along the bottom here are the f keys and a few other keys that are automatically assigned throwing a grenade with f1 for example you'll use all of the time what you can actually do is customize this using right click now shifting stuff around doesn't make too much of a difference there but if you go into say this menu on the right the complete menu let's say you want to put some sandbags down and you want it to be slightly more accessible than having to go through this menu all the time hold right click and you can drag it across now if you've just purchased assault squad 2 you may want to just jump into the skirmish mode right away but that actually isn't quite as easy as it should be in certain cases first of all you need to have the airborne dlc if you want to play against ai bots yes it's a bit ridiculous they've hidden it behind a paywall but that's the way it is so assuming you have the airborne dlc it still takes a little bit of skill to get a basic skirmish going so here we go let's do it go on to local and here now let's say you go to skirmish you'd be forgiven for doing that it is a skirmish match after all you choose your map whatever you want let's go for that one and create but there are no bots none at all how do i get them in here well actually you can't you can't because ironically you've chosen skirmish and you can't get bots on skirmish don't know why don't ask i don't know but let's try a different game type let's say assault zones go for it all of a sudden this section here looks a little bit different you have a number of slots that'll depend on the map you choose of course and if you right click on that you can add the ai this way but i repeat this will only be here 
if you have the Airborne DLC. Some of the best fun to be had in Assault Squad 2 is in the co-op mode, but the distribution and transfer of troops in that can be confusing. Essentially it comes down to this. Let's say I've got a couple of squads here, they're currently mine, but I want to transfer them to my friend because I feel a bit sorry for them. Once they're highlighted, the key is up in the top right. You click on this, it shows you your allies, and you can choose who to transfer those troops to. Click that, they're no longer mine, they belong to my friend. Let's try these other ones as well. And that's it. These are just the tips that I found helpful while learning the game. If you have some of your own, please share them in the comments below, as I think we can all agree. This is a difficult game to pick up, and the easier we can make it for new players, the better. See ya.